yeah, you can't have four secret rares in your deck. Yo -ho -ho -sha! What is up, Joe Crew? It is me, Joku DMD, and today I'm gonna go over all the keyword skills in the Dragon Ball Super card game. It's gonna be a long one, so buckle in and get your notepads out because we are gonna learn a lot today so you can get nasty at this game and learn all about these beautiful shiny pieces of cardboard. Oh yeah, I haven't said this in the whole series, but if you like this stuff, maybe hit the subscription button and you can see some of my shrimpings or whatever. All right, so I'm gonna go through the keyword skills in order relative to the way that they're presented online. Before I get started, a general rule of thumb is that keyword skills are in red. So any text that's in a red block that would be an example of a keyword skill. If something is in an orange or a blue text, that's referred to as a non-keyword skill. So if you're looking for keyword skills, it's gonna be in a red text box. So the first keyword skill I saw on the online keyword skill was KO. I didn't see any cards that have KO in a keyword skill, like this once per turn is, for example. But this card says, choose one of your opponent's battle cards with an energy cost of one and KO it. So what that means is when you activate this skill, you're gonna choose one of your opponent's cards that has an energy cost of one and place it in its owner's drop area, essentially. Next, we have Awaken. So Awaken can be resolved when the Awaken requirements are met. For this card, it says when your life is at four or less, you may draw two cards and flip this card over. So once your life is at four or less, Awaken can be activated either during your main step or your battle step offensively or defensively. So during your turn, at any point between battle and playing cards, you can switch this card to the other side and draw two cards. Or during a battle step when you're comboing, you can choose to flip the card. So you can do that offensively or you can do it defensively. Sometimes strategically, it's better to awaken during your offensive battle step to gain the most value out of your leader. So that's why you're allowed to do it during that step as well as during your main phase. Field refers to a card that is an extra card that is played in your battle area and remains in your battle area until it says otherwise or it is removed by a skill. So field cards exist and they will continue, they generally have permanence or they'll have some activate main or something that you can resolve once per turn, but it's an extra card that basically lives in your battle area until it's removed by a skill or until it is removed by itself. Blocker means that when a card is attacked, the attack can be redirected to the card that has the skill blocker on it. So if somebody is attacking my leader with a battle card and I don't want my leader to take the attack, I can choose to block the attack with this card before the combo step. Somebody declares an attack and then the defender declares whether they have any negates or no negates. At that point, the, uh, the attacker's auto will resolve. And after the attacker's auto resolves, a blocker must be declared by the defender before comboing happens. A blocker cannot be declared after comboing begins. Blockers can be really useful when you're trying to defend your unisons because defensively, when somebody attacks a unison, you do not get a battle step. So if you wanna get a battle step to do something like an arrival, which we'll get into later, you can redirect the attack at a blocker. So the blockers are very, very useful. So EX Evolve happens when you have a card in play that's specified. So in this, in this case, the specified card here is Blue Sun Goku with an energy cost of five or more. If you have a Blue Sun Goku with an energy cost of five or more in play, you can pay two energy and choose one card in your hand, put it in the drop area because it says that here, and then EX Evolve this card on top of that card and this card will come into play. If the card is in rest mode, the card evolving onto the card will be played in rest mode unless the card specifies otherwise. And not all cards require you to drop cards in order to, to EX Evolve. Some cards EX Evolve for free, some do it for one energy, some do it for five energy. It's different per card, but the idea is that you have a target in play and you play the card on top of the card by paying the energy cost and meeting the requirements stated after EX Evolve. If you're looking for what type of card it is, you can see in the bottom right corner, this would be a Sun Goku card because the character is Sun Goku. And this is a blue Sun Goku card because it is blue. So if you had a battle card, this battle card in play, you could actually play this card right on top of itself because it is a blue Sun Goku energy cost of five or more. Doesn't make much sense, but you could do it if you wanted to. So Xeno Evolve is you have the specified target in play. You can choose that card and send it to your warp area and then play this card. This card says Xeno Evolve five. So that means you need five energy in order to play this card. And if you have a Bardock Xeno in play, you can pay five energy, 
send the Bardock Xeno to your warp and play this card. Critical means that if this card deals life damage, the life damage goes to the opponent's drop area rather than going to their hand. Critical is a very strong skill because one of the resources for gaining card advantage that you have in this game is your life pool. And if your life pool is being sent directly to your drop area instead of your hand, it is a big disadvantage for the player that's losing that life. So critical means that the card is sent to the drop area rather than the hand from life. This card has a bunch of keyword skills, so we're going to go over a bunch of keyword skills on this one card. The first thing we see here is Double Strike. Double Strike means that when this card deals life damage or when it attacks a unison card, it'll either knock two life into the opponent's hand or it will knock two markers off of the unison it's attacking. There are also skills like Triple Strike and Quadruple Strike. Triple Strike will deal three damage and Quadruple Strike will deal four damage. The next skill we see here is Barrier. Barrier is a skill that makes it so that cards cannot be chosen. So in this example, this card says, if this card is in rest mode, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards in rest mode and up to one of their energy in rest mode and the chosen cards cannot be switched to active mode until the end of your opponent's next turn. If this card were in play and it were in rest mode and somebody else had this card out and they were activating this skill, this card could not be chosen by this skill because it has barrier. The words barrier and choose go together. So anytime you see barrier, it cannot be chosen by a skill. However, when a card is in your energy area, the barrier does not take effect. So if a card is in your energy and it has barrier, the barrier doesn't matter. It only applies to cards that are in your battle area. The next skill we see here is dual attack. Dual attack means that this card can attack two times. There's also triple attack, which means the card can attack three times. So a good way to remember the difference between double strike and dual attack is thinking about when you strike, you're immediately striking that many life or that many markers off of a leader card or a unison card. When you're attacking, it's the number of attacks that the card has. So dual attack or triple attack. Revenge means that when this card is being attacked, the card that is attacking it will get KO'd after the battle. Revenge does not apply to unison cards and it does not apply to leader cards. But if a battle card attacks this card, the card will be KO'd. Even if the card has barrier, revenge gets around barrier. So no matter what, a card attacking into this card will succumb to the revenge and be KO'd at the end of the battle. The next keyword skill we have here is once per turn. It's pretty self-explanatory. Once per turn just means you can only activate it once in a turn. And then once you've activated it, you cannot activate it again for that turn, but you can activate it during a following turn. Or if it's something that can be activated defensively, it can be activated on both players turn, but only once. Indestructible means that the card cannot be KO'd or removed from the battle area by skills. The only way that a card that has indestructible can be removed from a battle area is if its power is reduced below zero. If a card's power level is reduced below zero, it's not removed by a skill, it's removed by a game mechanic. So once the card's power reaches zero, it can no longer exist in the battle area and it will go to the drop area. We also have a union skill on this card. Here we say union potera. So union potera with four blue energy and two yellow energy. So if you have a Goku Black and a Yellow Zamasu in play, you can pay six energy, four of which have to be blue and two of which have to be yellow, and play this card on top of the two cards. And this card will come into play for six energy rather than paying eight energy for it. Some cards have different costs for Union Patera. So for this one, there's a five inside of a circle, which means that you'd have to pay five to activate this card's Union Patera. And this is another card that has an example of triple strikes, which means it would hit three life off of a leader or three markers off of a unison. Union Fusion works differently than Union Patera. Union Fusion, you choose the cards in your hand and you place them in your drop area. For this card, if you have a Sun Goku and a Vegeta in your hand with the same power, instead of paying five energy for this, you can pay four energy, two of which have to be blue and two of which can be any color. Play this card for four energy and then choose the Goku and the Vegeta in your hand and place them in your drop area. So the difference between Union Patera and Union Fusion is Union Patera, you need to have your targets in your battle area in order to activate the Union Patera skill. And for Union Fusion, you need the targets in your hand and they have to be the same power in order to activate the Union Fusion skill. Union Patera cards do not need to have the same power. They just have to have the specified names that are stated in the unit after the Union Patera skill on the card. Next, we have Union Absorb. So for this card, you would have to pay two energy to activate the Union Absorb skill. You could place one car battle card from your hand under this card, and then you can choose one Awakening Majin Buu from your deck and place it on top of this card, then shuffle your deck. 
So Union Absorb skills will usually play cards from your deck. So when you fulfill the requirements that are stated after Union Absorb, for this one it's paying two energy and placing a battle card under this card, you'll be able to search your deck for the specified card in the brackets here and play it on top of this card. Overrealm means that you must have that many cards in your drop area in order to activate this skill. So this says Overrealm 5 for 2 energy, which means I have to have 5 cards in my drop area and I have to pay 2 energy and that way I can play this card for 2 energy instead of playing it for 5. However, once I activate Overrealm, I need to banish my drop area. So my drop area will be sent to the warp. The warp is essentially an arbitrary drop area. It just means that your drop area is now empty. There are some cards that manipulate cards between warp and drop. However, the cards, so even if I had seven or eight cards in my drop area, this is over on five, I still have to warp my entire drop. All those cards go from the drop to the warp and then I could play this card. With Overrealm at the end of the turn, the card being played using Overrealm will leave the battle area. Dark Overrealm, which this card has as well, means that the cards in the drop area means that the number of cards here, which is five, and for cards, it, it differs depending on what card it is. But in this instance, I need five cards in my drop area that are black. If I have five cards in my drop area that are black, I can activate Dark Overrealm. And with Dark Overrealm, the difference is that this card will stay in play after the end of the turn. Most cards just have Overrealm and they'll come out and then they leave at the end of the turn. But there are some cards that will have Dark Overrealm or only have Dark Overrealm, which means you need that many black battle cards. So if I had 10 cards in my drop area and only four of them were black, I couldn't activate Dark Overrealm, but if I had eight cards in my drop area and five of them were black, I could banish all eight cards to my warp area and play this card for two er energy and this card would stay in play after the turn is over rather than leaving if it were played with Overrealm. Barrier we talked about. So this is an example of a card that has barrier and it cannot be chosen. So this card says, when you play this card, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards in rest mode and KO it. If you were targeting this card, you wouldn't be able to do it because it has barrier. So barrier cards cannot be chosen. Super combo. You can only have four cards in your deck with the keyword skill super combo. Generally, when you use a super combo, it gets 10,000 power for the battle and then you draw a card. The card that you are comboing into does not gain the power. This card gains the power. So instead of this being a zero plus zero, this becomes a zero plus 10K. And with this card specifically, you get to choose one card over your hand, put it at the bottom of your deck, and then draw two cards off the top of your deck. Most super combos are give you 10,000 power and draw one card, but this card allows you to filter some cards, so it's a really great super combo. Tokens are played off of other cards. This is an example of a counterattack, and when you activate this counterattack, you get to play a token. A token is any card that you want that's basically representing a battle card. So this is an example of a token that was made for me by Billiams Customs. So this this would be an example of a token that has 5,000 power and, and zero plus 5,000 combo power. So if I wanted to use something like this, I could use this to represent the token, and this is just representing the token that's described by this card. It doesn't matter what you use for a token, you can really use whatever you want. The world champion used a napkin in the championship, respect to Andrew Duvall. But yeah, tokens, you can play whatever you want to use them. They just have to match whatever the description of the token being played is once it's in your battle area. Warrior of Universe 7 means that all Universe 7 in all areas are treated as if they have no specified cost. So what that means is if I had a green Universe 7 card, I could play it with a yellow energy because the specified cost can be any color basically but you have to remember that doesn't apply to extra cards this is only battle cards so battle cards you can play any battle card that says universe 7 in its special trait with any color energy rather than the specified cost energy that it has this card also has bond 2 and after bond 2 it says universe 7 so if i have two universe 7 cards in my battle area they have to be battle cards when this card attacks, the bond two will activate. So this card will gain 5,000 power and double strike and I'll draw the card off the auto. But the bond takes effect when I have two battle cards that match the specification. Not all bonds have specifications of what they need on the board. Some cards will just say bond two. And that means if you have that card and another battle card, it'll gain the bond off the two since you have two cards in your battle area. 
talking about battle cards, battle cards that have bond count towards the bond. So if you have bond three and you only have three battle cards and one of the battle cards has bond three on it, that card will apply to the bond three and you will, you will have that skill active. If a card is removed during battle, the bond will lose effect. So in order to maintain the effect that's happening, the bond has to stay. If I were swinging with this card and I chose to combo off the two cards that I had in my battle era that were universe seven, I would lose the plus 5,000 power in double strike. Cards with deflect cannot be affected by counterplay skills. So if you have a card that says counterplay, the text that comes after the counterplay cannot affect a card that says deflect. However, if the card that has a counterplay also has an auto that resolves, the auto could affect the card that has deflect. A common misconception is when a person plays a card with deflect, the opponent still gets a counter window. And you can learn more about that in the counters video. But when a card is, is played, if the card has deflect and somebody plays a counterplay, the text that comes after the words counterplay will not affect the card that has deflect. Swap is a skill that allows you to switch one card into another card. This card says swap two, limit one, Goku's lineage with an energy cost of two. That means that I can only if I can only activate swap on skills of this card once per turn. However, if I have a card that is a Goku's lineage with an energy cost of two, I can choose this, I can choose to activate swap. I can play this card from my hand and return this card to my hand. A cool thing about swap also is if I had played this card and attacked with this card, I could then choose to activate swap and the card coming in would be played in active mode. Wormhole means that you can activate Overrealm a second time within one turn. If I didn't specify before, Overrealm can only be activated once per turn unless Wormhole is active. This card says, if your leader card is a black sand only or god card, when you play a battle card using Overrealm, this card gains Wormhole for the turn. And when this card gains Wormhole, it allows you to activate Overrealm a second time. And this would be an example of a card that moves cards between your warp and drop. So you can activate main to add a marker to this. Choose two black battle cards in your warp area and put them back in your drop area, which helps fuel your Overrealm for your second Overrealm in the same turn, which Wormhole allows you to do. Currently, there are only two cards with Wormhole printed on them. There's a leader from set four, it's a Demigra, and this Unison. Those are the only cards that have Wormhole. Wish is an alternate awakening mechanic, and it happens, you're allowed to activate it once you have seven Dragon Balls in your drop area. So once you have seven Dragon Balls in your drop area, you're allowed to activate Wish. And then once you're on your awakened side, once you activate your third and final skill on wish leaders, you remove the dragon balls from your drop area. And at the end of the turn, your leader will flip back to its original side. Dragon ball is a keyword skill. You can, you can have up to seven copies of cards with dragon ball on them. For this one, you have to pay one energy for it, but there is a free dragon ball that allows you to just draw a card and you can have seven copies of that card in your deck. You cannot have more than seven dragon ball cards work with wish leaders sparking activates when you have the specified number in your drop area so this card says sparking seven which means i would need to have seven cards in my drop area and if i do when i play this card if your opponent has four or more energy and there's sun goku guardian angel under this card choose all of your opponent's energy switch them to rest mode and this card gains dual attack for the turn so this skill will only resolve if i have seven cards in my drop area I can have more than seven cards, but I need at least seven in order for this skill to take effect. Burst means you must place cards from the top of your deck into your drop area. So this card says burst five. If I wanna activate this skill, I need to choose five cards from the top of my deck and place them in my drop area, and then this skill will become active. Arrival allows you to play cards during your combo step when you have the specified colors in your combo area. This card says arrival blue yellow. So if I have a blue and a yellow card in my combo area, I can play this card for three energy rather than paying eight for it. And as I showed in the battle video, you don't just need a separate blue and a yellow. If you have a card that's multicolor, that's blue and yellow, that counts for the arrival cost for this card. So you can just combo one card that's both blue and yellow and then pay three energy to play this card. Aegis is a defensive combo step skill. So if somebody is attacking me and this card is in my battle area, I can activate Aegis by choosing one blue yellow card in my hand because it says Aegis blue yellow and put it in my drop area. When I put the blue yellow card in my drop area, I will be allowed to reactivate two of my rested energy. They can either be blue or yellow energy. 
Additionally, this card specifically says when you activate Aegis, you get to draw two cards. So if this card is in play and you choose one blue and one yellow or one blue yellow card in your hand and put it in your drop area during your combo step defensively, you can reactivate two energy and with this card, you can draw two cards. But Aegis just means you drop a multicolor blue yellow card or you drop one blue and one yellow and you get to switch two of your energy to active mode. Alliance is an auto that resolves even if an attack is negated. So when this card attacks, I can activate Alliance. Alliance says if I have a card that's red or green, I can switch it to act. I can switch it to rest mode when this card attacks, and this card will gain the attack power of the card that I switch to rest mode if it is red or green. So when I attack with this card, if this is 16,000, and then I activate Alliance with this card, this will now become a 46,000 attack rather than gaining the combo power like you usually do. But when you activate Alliance, you need to have the cards in active mode in order to rest them. And when the card is rested, Alliance will be activated and the card that's attacking will gain the battle power of the card that is rested. Offering says, when you play this card, your opponent may choose one card in their life and place it in their drop area, or you get to draw two cards. So if I played this card, my opponent could either choose a card in their life and put it in their drop area, or I get to draw two cards to my hand from my deck. Revive says, when this card is KO'd, I can choose one blue and one green card in my hand and place them in my drop area and play this card from my drop area after it's KO'd. Or I could choose a multicolor blue-green card and drop that, and that would fulfill the blue-green requirement. So you can either choose one blue and one green, or one multicolor blue-green, place it in your drop area when this card is KO'd, and this will play this card from your drop area. Invoker says, when this card is in play, instead of paying the full energy cost for a multicolor red-blue extra card, I can use one red-blue energy to pay for that card while a card with Invoker is in play. So here's an example of a card that's a five energy red blue extra card. Instead of paying five energy for this, if I had this card in play, I could use one multicolor red blue energy and play this card for the one energy and resolve the skill of the card. Successor is a skill that allows me to play this card if I have enough battle cards that add up to the exact amount of energy that this, cost, this card costs. So this is a nine energy card. If I had three three energy cards in my battle area, I could activate successor, pay one green, one yellow, and then two of whatever color, so four energy total, declare successor, choose the cards in my battle area, put them in my drop area, and play this card. Unique means that you can only have one copy of the card in play. So once the card is in play, if it has unique, then you can't have more copies of that card in play. If a card is unique and you attempt to play another one, the card coming into play will just go to the drop area instead of being played. Overlord means that this card can activate Overlord once per turn by choosing a battle card with Servant and placing it at the bottom of the owner's deck, which allows them to draw a card. So here's an example of a card with Servant. If Paragus is in play and I choose this card and send it to the bottom of my deck, it allows me to draw one card. Cards with Servant gain 10,000 power, but they cannot be switched to active mode at the beginning of the next turn. So if I were to attack with this card, it would attack for 19,000 instead of 9,000. However, at the beginning of my next turn, it will not reactivate to active mode. It will stay in rest mode. And that 10,000 power is a permanent. So if somebody is attacking this card, they'd have to attack it for 19,000 or more in order to KO it. Rejuvenate is a skill that allows you to put the top card of your deck in your life area. So in this instance, once per turn, if your leader card is green and you remove four markers from this card, so this card would have to have four markers, and you remove four markers from this card, you, may, you have to take a card from underneath this card and place it in your drop area, and that will allow you to take the top card of your deck and put it in your life area. So generally when you activate a rejuvenate skill, you need to choose one unison in your hand one turn and place it underneath the unison in play, which you're allowed to do once per turn. And when you do that, it actually adds a marker to the unison. So if I had three markers on this unison and I wanted to get a life back and I had another unison in my hand, I could place the unison underneath this unison, add a marker to it to put it for four, minus four on the unison. These would go to the drop area and I would get to add a card from my deck to my life. Spirit Boost is the newest skill. And in order to activate Spirit Boost, you must remove a marker or the number of markers specified in Spirit Boost from a unison and then pay the specified energy cost. 
So for this card, it says activate limit one. Limit one means I can only activate this skill on copies of this card once per turn. Even if I have another copy of this card, I cannot activate this skill once I've activated it once per turn. Spirit Boost 1 means I can remove a marker from my unison and pay one energy instead of paying four energy for this card. And then this card will come into play. So it's basically a cheaper way of playing cards or resolving skills, but the way that you pay for it is by removing markers from unisons in play. And lastly, we have Ultimate and Victory Strike. Ultimate is a keyword skill on secret rares. You can see secret rares say SCR in the bottom right corner. You can only have one copy of a secret rare in your deck. And yeah, you can't have four secret rares in your deck. Victory Strike means when this card deals life damage, you win the game. There are only two cards in the game that have Div Victory Strike currently, Son Goku the Awakened Power and Son Goku and Vegeta the Apex of Power. When these cards deal life damage, your opponent loses all of their life in one hit. It's pretty good. I should have got that. Give me that. So that takes us to the end of our keyword skills list. I hope you guys found this helpful. I'm gonna bust out my favorite card in the game so we can just review some of the keyword skills. So this card has deflect, which means it cannot be affected by counterplay skills. It has triple strike, which means it hits three life off of a leader or three markers off of a unison. And it has dual attack, which means after it attacks, it stands up and it gets to attack again. This is my be favorite best looking card in the game. Son Goku giving a body massage. I have a video that talks about the story of what's going on in this video, in this card, which I'll link in the description if you guys want to check it out. I am Joku DMD. That has been the keyword skill list. Thanks for watching this video. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I am a dentist. I can't end without doing a dental tooth tip. So I would recommend developing your dental hygiene skills. It's not going to happen overnight if you don't do it already. You got to put in time and developing a dental routine where you can really clean your teeth effectively, do it every single day, and take really good care of your teeth is gonna do a lot of work for you in the long run because your teeth are something that help you enjoy life to its fullest, so take care of them, get those skills, brush twice a day, floss once a day, use a power toothbrush and a Listerine Access Flosser. If you have questions, drop them in the comment section. I'd be happy to answer them. I'm Joku DMD, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.